Hey YouTube and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're just going to make some butternut squash. Um, by the time you guys see this, Hurricane Dorian will probably be here. <laughs> and I am currently trying today to prep as much as I can for Hurricane Dorian. We live in what's considered the coastal part of North Carolina, Southern North Carolina, about an hour from the coast. So. We usually get hit pretty good when the coast gets hit. Um, and sometimes we lose power and we have a generator though, so I can uh, make some butternut squash soup, stick it in the freezer, and then warm it up on the um, grill. Our grill has one of those um, burners on it. So we can have soup. Um, you start out with one butternut squash that you've halved and taken out the seeds. Now this little guy, He's pretty wimpy. Um, normally I like to get one that's about three pounds. This one is tiny. So if you can, uh, my grocery store, this was literally the last butternut squash. Um, I feel like maybe it's just coming into season and people are really wanting to get something for fall. Um, but I digress. Get a, a, a three pounder if you can. I'm gonna work with what I've got today. Um, we start out by just kind of drizzling it a little bit with some olive oil. Make sure you kind of get everything. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and add, I've got two onions roughly chopped, and I'm just gonna add that to my cookie sheet. Now I have lined my cookie sheet with foil. Truthfully, it's just for easier cleanup. Just try to separate those onions a little bit. They're gonna add a lot of flavor to our soup. I'm gonna give them a good drizzle with olive oil. And I'm gonna get my hands dirty. Just kind of shush them around in the olive oil so everything gets coated as best you can. <clears throat> I think I'm fighting a sore throat today too. I woke up and my voice doesn't even sound like mine today. So, but I'm battling through. I'm thinking about pulling out my camera and trying to do like what I do to prep for a hurricane. You know, other people might be interested in that. Um, I know I am not from North Carolina, so uh, things like this would kind of intrigue me growing up in the North, not having any idea <laughs> what it's like to ride out a hurricane. All right, I've got my squash coated. I've got my onions coated. Now I'm also adding two bulbs of roasted garlic packs. Um, now I have a video on this and I will link it in the description box below to just save us time. You can go back and see how I do that to roast your garlic. But I'm gonna pop this in a, well, no, whoops. I forgot my salt and pepper. You're gonna to wanna to liberally salt your butternut squash and your salt, or your, your onions. And then I'm gonna give them a good, good serving of some fresh black uh, ground pepper. <clears throat> if you don't like pepper, you can certainly leave this part off. But I would definitely say to add the salt, it brings out the flavors. All right, now I'm going to pop it in a preheated uh, 400 degree oven for about an hour. Now my squash is a little small, so I'm gonna check it, but if you have a normal size squash, it should be about an hour. All right, I'm gonna pop it in there and I'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, I'm back. My butternut squash has finished uh, roasting off in the oven. Um, I should note that I did take out my onions about halfway through, so roast your onions for about a half an hour. Um, kind of keep an eye on them so they don't get too brown. Um, my squash, I've let sit on my stove top here for about, oh, I'd say 20 minutes because you're gonna wanna have to pick them up and it's quite warm, so be careful. Use your best judgment. At this point, I'm just gonna scoop out my squash flesh and it should just scoop right out of there. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick it right in my, in my stock pot. Whoop. There we go. Never fails, get up a camera, and it doesn't go according to plan. But I'm gonna scoop the fleshy part out of my squash, try to get as most as you can, because that's where the 
kind of the meat and potatoes come out of your your soup. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. You don't wanna get the skin part in, just the soft uh, squash part. But I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out this squash and I'll bring you back when it's um, all finished. Okay guys, I'm back. I've got all my squash uh, right in my stock pot. To that I'm gonna go ahead and add um, the onions that we roasted off with the squash and uh, those two bulbs of garlic. Just stick them right on in the pot. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is really bugging me today. I've got four cups of, I'm using ham broth, but you can use whatever kind of broth you have on hand. If you want to keep it vegetarian, use vegetable stock, that's completely fine, or chicken stock, no big deal. I'm going to give it a quick stir, and I'm just, I'm going to turn my, um, my burner onto a medium heat just to bring my, because see my stock was cold, it was in the refrigerator, um, and I want to get everything nice and hot again. So I'm going to turn my burner on about a medium heat, let this just kind of simmer and hang out and all that garlic and the onions can all kind of marry together in the pot and make something really, really good. So turn your burner on medium heat and let it hang out for about 20 minutes. I'll bring you back when we're all done. Okay, my soup has been on the boil for about 20 minutes. I just turned it off, but it's still kind of rolling there. I have a, an immersion blender. I'm, I'm really sorry about my voice, guys. I think I'm about to lose it. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, start immersing, blending uh, my soup so that way it's a nice, um, almost like a, a baby food type consistency, but I'll do that. Um, I'll kind of speed up the camera and turn off the sound so you don't have to listen to that. Okay, my soup is nice and blended. Um, the last thing I'm gonna add is just a little bit of maple syrup. Now, this soup is not a sweet, well, I don't care for it sweet. I have seen other recipes out there that call for like brown sugar and cinnamon and nutmeg, which is fine, uh, but I don't care for that. When I'm looking for a squash soup, I kind of want something a little bit more savory, a little bit more hearty. Um, but I do add a little bit of the maple syrup simply because it brings out the flavor of the squash more, I feel. I tried it for years. I never added maple syrup and someone suggested I do, so I did. And turns out I like it better. So <laughs> just about um, a tablespoon. And then what I'm gonna do is stir it up a little bit and I'm gonna taste it and I'm gonna see if it needs a little more or not. Cause this is kind of a personal preference here. Let me taste it. I'm gonna add one more tablespoon. And then I'm gonna taste it again. I'll we'll stir it and taste it again. Now mine is a little bit soupier, um, simply because my squash was a little wimpy. Um, if you use a larger squash, you'll get more of that meat um, from the squash. And of course your soup will not turn out this wimpy. All right, that's good. I'm also kind of tasting for salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt here. Salt brings out our flavor. And I'm gonna little, add a little bit more uh, fresh ground black pepper. Give it a stir, taste it again, make sure you're happy with your final product here. Let me taste it. I think that is pretty much perfect. Now I have seen some recipes that strain your squash soup, which I do suggest, however, well, I'll go ahead and do mine just so you can see what I'm kind of meaning here. But mine is so soupy, I'm not sure I'll get a whole lot out of it. Seriously, guys, my squash was wimpy. 
All right, I'm gonna get a different bowl and my strainer and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a different bowl and a strainer and I'm just gonna simply pour my soup in. You should be able to get most of the lumps out and it does kind of add to the decadency of the soup. Like if you're really trying to impress somebody here. And just kind of mash it through. It should catch all of the larger chunks. And sometimes squash can get kind of like, um, oh, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for, but kind of strainy, like the strains, the fibers of the squash. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. You want to look like a professional. So I'm just going to keep straining. And I see some onion skins that didn't get hit up by the immersion blender. So we're getting kind of all of those imperfections out. When you force it through the strainer, if there are any lumps, it'll kind of take care of that problem for you. All right, I am happy. And that is my end product, my butternut squash soup. I really hope you guys give this recipe a try. It is delicious, especially now that fall is here, although it's not quite here for me, it's still quite warm. But I am anticipating a nice cool fall. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, if you like cooler weather like I do. If you like today's recipe, recipe, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It is absolutely free to do, and it helps my channel out very, very much. Um, and I will see you in the next one, guys. I, I really hope that uh, by the time you're seeing this, we kind of have a better understanding what this hurricane's gonna do. And hopefully it's, it's not gonna harm anybody and everybody's kind of out of harm's way, so. If you're on the coastal US, I'm really, or anywhere else in like the Bahamas, I've, I've heard it's, it's hitting there. I'm praying for you. I'm really hoping that everybody makes it out of here okay. All right, I'll quit rambling. God bless. I'll see you later.